Hi, everyone. How are you? My name is Mary Pang. I am from the International Center for Veterinary Services based in Beijing, China. So ICVS for short. Um, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to speak with you and want to share some of our advice, our experiences, and some of our insights. The coronavirus hit Beijing first. And basically, it happened at a time that was right before the biggest holiday of the year, known as Chinese New Year. This was late January. When we first heard about it, uh, we were very concerned. I was personally very concerned because I had also lived through a previous epidemic in China, the SARS epidemic in 2002, 2003. So we were able to swing into action very quickly taking all precautions to reinforce our infectious disease control and prevention, all of our protocols to keep everybody safe. So far, our staff is safe, their families are safe, all of our clients, their pets, everybody has been safe so far, so we feel very fortunate. The steps that were taken, uh, I'd like to speak on a community level, on a personal level as well, to share with you some of the insights that we learned that really were able to protect the humans, the care providers, and then I'll talk about the animals. It is extremely important to self-quarantine. It is extremely important to abide by the shelter in place you know, requirements. Uh, Beijing or China as a whole was able to enact much stricter enforcement. They basically had national mandates. These were mandatory by law. So many of us were quarantined in our compounds, residential compounds. Um, businesses were not allowed to open. Uh, it was a huge sacrifice economically, socially, personally. We had people who had you know, traveled and then couldn't get back to their homes or their jobs in the cities. We had people who traveled back to the cities, but then were not able to go and return to visit their families. So it was a very, very big disruption in all of our lives. Um, frequent hand washing. This absolutely is essential. In an eight hour day, I will wash my hands more than 10 times, right? Just doing just being in the hospital facilities, typing on my computer, um, interaction with my staff, uh, very important, wash your hands. Hand sanitizer, if you run out of it, is not the end of the world. If you have access to soap and water, wash your hands with soap and water, that's most important. Hand sanitizer is used as a replacement or a substitute for when you don't have soap and water. Okay, so if you're in, in your home, if you're in a facility, if you're at the hospital, use soap and water, wash your hands. Uh, we did have to wear masks. We work in a hospital setting. So we constantly have you know, a flow of patients and their pet owners coming in. We do wear masks. In China, they actually did have a requirement that we wear masks. If you're out in public spaces, if you're unwell, if you're not feeling well, you should wear a mask as well uh, in the United States. In terms of how we were able to protect all the uh, clients, the pet owners coming in to the hospital facility, we did have to very carefully manage our patient flows. Work together with your hospitals, with um, all of the uh, medical care providers, help them help you. They will need to make strict appointments, abide by those appointments, be on time for those appointments, uh, you know, wait until you're able to come on in. I understand that there's curbside pickup now at a lot of vet hospitals in the United States. That's great. You know, they're, they're doing this for a purpose, doing this for a reason. Uh, when we had our clients come on into the hospital, we had to really restrict um, the number of appointments. We have multiple examination rooms. We usually can schedule concurrent examinations with, with the doctors that are on duty. We were not able to do that we needed to schedule consecutive appointments, which definitely does reduce the patient load for the hospitals, but it also makes it safer in that we're reducing the total number of people inside the facility at any one time. We don't wanna have overlap. We don't wanna to have too many groups of people um, because it's basically just another, another you know, method or another vehicle for exposing individuals to the coronavirus. 
Um, at that time, there was news coming out that there were asymptomatic carriers, people who may have already been infected by coronavirus, but were not displaying any symptoms. So you can never be too sure. For, for the um, animals, we, all of us, have community cats in our residential compounds, uh, office building compounds, schoolyard compounds, with schools being closed, with a lot of businesses being closed, with a lot of uh, commercial uh, residential compounds, rather. You know, we were issued entry exit cards, ID cards, all of the people who live in a residential compound. Um, we could only go in and out with an issued card. And that meant that you had a lease or you owned the property that you were residing in. We could have no visitors. You know, as of today, in at the end of March, these enforcements are still in place. These regulations are still in place. They have not lifted a lot of these residential entry exit restrictions. Uh, that means that when you have you know, areas that are sort of commonly shared, and you would have people that didn't necessarily live on the compound go onto the grounds to try and feed the cats. These people are now restricted. So what we needed to do is to sort of have a partnership, a team system where you, know, you keep in contact with the people that are able to be inside the residences and make sure that there is a constant stream of, of food and water that's being provided for the cats. Uh, we were not able to, you know, during the, the height of the outbreak, you know, I would say basically from, from end of January, Chinese New Year, for the entire month of February, we really were not able to have spay neuter services uh, for community cats, T TNR, trap neuter return. Um, that's because most of the country was under lockdown or some form of lockdown. Now in March, you know, with nature, the cats are going into heat. Uh, you know, we have screaming cats. We have, we're already starting to have, you know, litters of kittens that are brought into the hospital. Boxes of kittens are being brought in, of course. So now we're starting to resume our TNR programs again. Uh, we have to be very careful because, again, we need to be better organized. There cannot be any overlap when people are coming into the facility. And they now need to coordinate much more closely and much more carefully with their compound management agents uh, because of their vehicles that need to be brought into the compound. They can't drive into the compound. We now have to, you know, everybody has to carry all the equipment, all the traps, everything out into the main road uh, because drivers and vehicles are not permitted into these, these um, enclosed compounds. So we really um, do want to give some advice to you. We want you to, first of all, feel reassured. We lived through this. You know, China had very, very strict enforcement, perhaps at a level that is not feasible or practical for countries like the United States or Europe. Uh, but the shelter in place regulations is critically important. Please follow, okay, go out only if you have to. You know, during that time that we were all sort of under some form of house quarantine, self-quarantine, shelter in place, over a three week period, I think I went out maybe less than five times. That was only to purchase essential grocery items. If you can get delivery, get delivery. Don't be afraid of the delivery person. You're not gonna get coronavirus from packages or grocery bags. Don't worry about that. Um, practice good hand hygiene, and if you can, wear a mask when you're going to public spaces, you know, crowded public spaces, public transit. If you're not feeling well, absolutely do, do put that mask on. Okay, so if there's any questions, feel free to ask us. Community Cats has our contact information. We wish you all the best. We wish you well. You will get through this. We will all be fine, and we will be able to resume our care for our community cats again very soon.